Welcome to the Gospel Liberty Podcast. Thanks for joining us for another episode. In this episode, we want to do something a little different. We wanted to give a, a tribute to a, a former pastor, former professor, and his wife, who have been some of the most influential people in uh, our lives, although we never uh, got to get to meet them. Uh, we're talking about Jack Miller and Rosemary Miller. Uh, Jack Miller sometimes goes by C. John Miller. And I saw you smile when we mentioned their names. Why, why are you smiling by even the, the mere mention of, of the name? Oh, they're just such, yeah, so, such wonderful people, such great um, just people of Christ and have truly stirred our affections uh, quite a bit. And um, I mean, yeah, we even named one of our children's middle names after them. Mm-hmm. So um, just really love and treasure them, even though, yes, we've never met them, but such wonderful spiritual mentors, mm-hmm. even um, from afar. Yes. And they've impacted so many people in uh, Reformed Christian circles and the gospel-centered movement and mm-hmm. the wonderful uh, uh, grace cultures that they are kind of, you know, some people that the Lord has used that you might not have even heard of mm-hmm. who may have deeply influenced your your pastors or your uh, people who have discipled you either directly or indirectly. Hmm. So let me just give a brief introduction of, of who they are and, and who Jack Miller is. So he was a professor of practical theology at Westminster Seminary in Philadelphia uh, in in the 1960s. And then in uh, the early 1970s, I believe it was 1973, he planted a church called New Life Church in Jenkintown, Pennsylvania. Hmm. And then he went on to found a, a mission called World Harvest Mission that then uh, became Surge, S-E-R-G-E, Surge. And uh, that it still exists today. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a big uh, uh, missionary agency. We've uh, supported them in the past and have followed them quite closely. And they, uh, there's also a publishing arm of Surge uh, called New Growth Press, which uh, if you are in uh, Reformed Christian circles, I'm sure you have some books on your shelf that have been published by New Growth Press. And they're our favorite publishing oh, company. Oh, I was going to say, they're easily yeah. the greatest publishing company. Um, just every, I mean, almost every single thing that they put out is just so solid. Saturated in grace and, and Christ. And um, uh, Paul Tripp has published a, a lot of stuff through them and CCEF, the Christian Counseling and Educational mm-hmm. uh, Foundation. And uh, they're, uh, so, so Jack Miller as a professor of practical theology, he trained a whole generation of pastors coming from uh, Westminster, California, which was kind of the, the Bastion Reform Seminary mm-hmm. in the world at, at that time. And uh, he was all about grace hmm. and uh, all about helping people take the beautiful truths of the Bible which you know we believe are summarized in Reformed theology, but the beautiful truths of the Bible, and he would help them to apply it to their lives. And yes. of course, a, a right understanding of the Bible is that it's centered on Christ and it's centered on his grace, mm-hmm. that we throw off every weight and the sin which so easily entangles by looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. Mm-hmm. So he is he helped folks to understand what the Bible teaches about the fact that the gospel is not just the way that you become a Christian, mm-hmm. but it's the way you make all progress and growth in your sanctification, mm-hmm. that you continually look to Jesus to uh, uh, move towards perfection, which ultimately obviously will only come in, in glory uh, after the return of Christ. So I think the the first the first resource that I was introduced to um, in this whole circle was uh, the the World Harvest Mission uh, booklet. They, they put out these amazing studies, mm-hmm. and there's one called Gospel Identity. And a church that that we were a part of was going through this this uh, this resource called Gospel Identity. It's still around. You can get it on a New Growth Press website. It's so incredibly helpful. And we just recently went through it again. We kind of you know occasionally revisit these old studies because they're so they're so good you have to go back yes for soul care and Mm -hmm. for your heart and uh, really getting to the root idols that we all struggle not not to worship amen and then soon after that i think the first book length resource we were exposed to was rosemary miller his wife 
who is amazing gospel center woman, she wrote a book called from fear to freedom. Hmm. And can you explain a little bit about, uh, where we w- were when we were exposed to that and, and how it impacted us and what it's about? I mean, I don't really remember for sure where we were. I I remember that I read it in like two days Mm -hmm. because it was just so good. And you are the bigger reader than I am. So for the listeners, that's actually huge. (laughs) No, um, but it was, yeah, I mean, just... Yeah, I feel like I've recommended the book to so many people and purchased it for so many people Mm -hmm. because it's just so, so good and just... Uh, literally from fear to freedom. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, but also just looking at your past or just whatever you have gone through in life and other other fears that you've Mm -hmm. gone through or just major things in your life or minor things in your life where you're not fully understanding and recognizing your identity in Christ Mm -hmm. and truly getting to your heart and your mind and your whole self to fully understand the gospel to get to that freedom in Christ. Yep. And because the, the the subtitle is living as sons and daughters of God from yes. fear to freedom, living as sons and daughters of God. So it's all about your, our identity, your adoption. Your adoption. Yep. Your adoption, your identity. I mean, they have, we can talk about this too, but just, they have an amazing sonship series. I just feel like so many of their resources are all intertwined. And as you get into them, it's just this beautiful, mm-hmm. amazing world of truth that is just so grounded in scripture and just very, very beneficial for the soul. Amen. So yeah, one of the main emphases of their ministry is that so many of the experiential problems that uh, come in the Christian life is due to a lack of experiential understanding of the fact that we are children of God in Amen. Christ. Yes. That uh, we so often can intellectually say, oh, I know, I'm, uh, I know I've been adopted by God. I know he's my heavenly father. Mm. I know I'm a, a son of God. I know I'm a daughter of God. But do we actually taste that and do we live out the implications of it? Mm-hmm. Or do we live out of what they, they called the orphan mentality? Mm-hmm. When Jesus said, you know, I will not leave you as mm. orphans. And we have not received the spirit of slavery to fall into fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. That's where that title from fear to freedom came from because we live our lives in this uh, perpetual, uh, almost constant state of being fearful about this and anxious Mm -hmm. about this and worrying about what's going to happen. And we lack so much trust in the sovereignty of God and the love of God. Amen. And when we see how those come together in Christ on the cross and in, in his perpetual care for us by his spirit um, to this day, and we actually have faith to trust that and live out the implications of our new identity, uh, it, it changes everything. Oh, it, it completely changes everything. I mean, so many other practical examples of just you know, oh, how you relate to your parents or how you relate to friends or your coworkers or struggles with comparison or difficult struggles, people. difficult, yeah, difficult people that you're interacting with or just your own natural tendency to believe lies. Yes. Amen. And the answer to all of that is the grace of God and the cross of Christ and the implications of it for us, which is the fact that we are sons and daughters of mm, God who are amen. dearly loved children. And what does Ephesians 5 one say? Be imitators of God as beloved children, mm-hmm. as dearly loved children. Mm-hmm. Uh, so don't just imitate God and just do it, you know, in order to gain a right standing before him or mm-hmm. to feel good about yourself or to uh, be better than other people. But do it because you are already a beloved child of, of God. Amen. So it, you already mentioned the uh, sonship, which is kind of their, their most famous uh, study that came out of, of all of this. And uh, it's so unbelievably oh, helpful. Oh, it's so good. Um, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to put, spoil it for too, you. no, I don't want to put oh, yeah. too much work onto yeah. you, but maybe we can just link, you know, yes. lots of books or recommendations resources. or some, yeah. yeah, resources I think would be super helpful, um, because they're just so good and we would just highly recommend, yeah, listening. I mean, how can they, can we, they listen to the series, the, the lectures? Or, the, I mean, the, you, there's... You, you have to pay for the Sonship series, but there okay. are, I'll, I'll link to uh, a lot of his sermons that are online and, and books and, and resources because, 
Uh, he has so many amazing books uh, that are so Christ-centered. Once again, we're not mm-hmm. praising men ultimately. No. Uh, men or women with, with Rosemary. It's because they point to Jesus and they glorify Jesus Amen. so much, which is why we we love and respect these people so much. And it's really, uh, you know, we, we don't want to get into a, a place where we're saying that there's this second experience of grace or there's kind of two t- two tier two tiers of Christians, those who, you know, understand Jack Miller and those who don't. We don't want to get into that whatsoever. There's so many wonderful people who understand grace, who have never been exposed to to this stuff. But but the the answer really is to, uh, the the problem I'd say with, uh, in many circles, is that there really is a small understanding of grace and Mm -hmm. its implications. Mm -hmm. That people they talk about, they can talk about grace occasionally from the pulpit, or they can say we're justified by, by faith alone, or they can, uh, you know, assent to the fact that we are sons and daughters of God or say Mm -hmm. that, Oh, you know, Christianity, that Jesus is gracious, but there's a difference between that and living your entire life Mm -hmm. in light of grace and being a person of grace. Amen. And I mean, I think both of them in their practicality of their writing styles and just how raw they are is so, I just, it is so like encouraging encouraging, and you you can relate with it so much because so often people don't write like that. They try to, you know, oh, cover up things or they don't want to give examples or they don't want to share personal experiences. And I feel like both of them in their writing is so real and it's so helpful to think through and to really understand where they're coming from or Mm -hmm. different situations that she had with her family or whatever it may be. And then to see just how she, walked through that with with the gospel Amen. is so so good and so helpful and just was yep. i mean obviously extremely encouraging to my own soul and yeah. um just hope hope it can be an encouragement to others amen and, and it's not this 21st century mindset of just oh authentic authenticity rules overall and mm. you know being authentic is the number one thing that's not what we're saying whatsoever we're saying that they were authentic and real and open and honest because uh, let love be without hypocrisy and mm. hypocrisy is acting. Mm-hmm. So genuineness is a Christian virtue, Amen. but it doesn't end merely with auth- authenticity as if that's the highest character quality. Their authenticity and what our authenticity should do is lead people to Jesus. Amen. And it shouldn't just be wallowing in, oh, you know, look at how much I can talk about my tough day and my tough life and oh I'm being authentic praise God and everyone in the circle gives you a round of applause because you shared a lot of stuff and you Mm -hmm. opened up that's not the end all be all the end all be all is to be open and real and not be a hypocrite not be an actor for the sake of growing in Christ and Mm -hmm. glorifying Jesus amen and helping people to actually experience real heart sanctification not just moralistic behavior change Mm -hmm. or some intellectual ascent to the Christian faith that really Mm. doesn't have any experiential grasp of grace and its implications. No, amen, completely. So so the Millers, uh, from Fear to Freedom, once again, Rosemary tells a ton of details about their family life and uh, what the Lord did in his grace to uh, bring so much uh, healing through a deeper understanding of the gospel and of grace. And one of the our favorite books was uh, Come Back Come Barbara, Barbara. Yeah. which is a story of uh, Jack and Rosemary's wayward daughter, Barbara, and he ended up writing a book, this book with her, and they tell the story of how she was uh, wayward, hmm. and uh, it's just the whole story of how they learned to trust the Lord and to entrust her to the Lord and to be gracious with her hmm. um, and kind to her, even though she was running away from the Lord, and to oh, pursue my. her in kindness. Yes and yet still speak the truth in love. It's really a, a great case study on something that we love to talk about. It's, you know, John 1, 14, that Jesus came from the Father and he was full of grace and truth. Hmm. And um, I think that these people are a good, it's a good biography. It's a good example and case study of what it looks like to be filled with grace yes. and truth and not an either or, hmm. but it's a both and. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jack Miller wrote a book called The Heart of a Servant Leader, which I think is extremely uh, amazing and just kind of getting to exactly that. What makes a a Christian leader, what Mm -hmm. makes someone Christ-like and gracious and truthful and just and kind and patient 
in spiritual leadership because there's so there's so many misunderstandings of what it means to be a Christian leader mm-hmm. these days of you know there's so much uh, so many Christian pastors are tense and uptight about oh no what if this person is going to learn this or what if this person is going to do that and uh, and then they end up controlling and domineering their flock and it just uh, it's it's a lack of understanding of sonship Amen. and a lack of, of trust in the Lord. But he Amen. wrote a book called Repentance, uh, which is incredible. Uh, a faith worth sharing. Two of his books on evangelism are amazing. A faith worth worth sharing. It's a kind of a case study of giving examples of evangelistic conversations that he had, which I learned so much from. Hmm. Powerful evangelism for the powerless. That's one of my favorite books. He actually, the Lord helped me through his work helped me to actually start praying for people with expectation that God Hmm. loves to save. Amen. And that was something that I just thought, you know, oh, it's highly unlikely that someone, that anyone's going to get saved. Hmm. But he helped me to understand the beauty of the gospel of Hmm. grace and how Jesus loves to go after lost sheep. Yes. Amen. And uh, so uh, check, check that one out. Another one of his best works is Outgrowing the Ingrown Church, Hmm. which is... So essential just on this, uh, these, uh, so often churches become sectarian, they become ingrown, they just become uh, like, you know, I think he used the phrase like a theological museum Hmm. of, you know, older generations. And this is really, you know, helpful when it comes to uh, churches partnering with one another and seeing the the broader kingdom for what it is. And pastors, he used this phrase called gospel pace setters, that Hmm. pastors should be the chief repenters in the Hmm. church and the pace setters uh, for uh, understanding the gospel. And then, um, you know, once again, check out the whole uh, website too in ministry. One of our favorite resources is uh, the Gospel Centered Life, Mm -hmm. which was from uh, someone who became a a, a disciple of of, uh, Jack Miller, uh, who was discipled by Jack Miller. I don't know if it was directly or indirectly, but Bob Thune Hmm. is a pastor of a church in in Omaha, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And he and Will Walker wrote a book called The Gospel Centered Life, which is one of the most helpful resources that we've gone through many times and with many folks. So check that out as well. But all of this, once again, it's not about glorifying or exalting in a man or a woman. It's about... uh, Jesus. Mm-hmm. And it's about the fact that these folks point us to Christ. And they're they're not perfect. We don't agree with every single thing that's in no. all these books. I don't I want to say that. Um but it's uh the Lord really used it to help us to grow in grace mm-hmm. and to grow in uh, what in living out the implications of the gospel so that we can live in step with the truth of the gospel, right? Amen. So so good. Oh yeah, and also didn't she didn't Rosemary write the Gospel Centered Parent because that one was just exceptional. Yes, yep, yep. She partnered with a couple other folks. The the Gospel Centered Parent published by by New Growth Press, uh, which is absolutely amazing. And then I I have to uh, I'm glad I didn't forget the biography of Jack Miller. Yes, that, cheer that, up. that came out. Yep, cheer up. So um, so by, good by Michael A. Graham, which hopefully hmm. will you know expose many folks to the Jesus Center teaching of, of these folks. It was published by PNR Publishing, Presbyterian Reform Publishing in 2020. And uh, we read it together mm-hmm. in the evenings. And uh, what an amazing uh, resource. Uh, so so take a look at all these and be encouraged in the gospel. In Christ, yes, amen. Because uh, it's what it's all about. It's mm-hmm. about Jesus. It's about his grace and his cross and its implications for our life for our joy in Christ and for God's glory. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Gospel Liberty Podcast.